this video, I will be doing a chapter by chapter summary of Aristotle's Poetics. Um, I will stick to some of the key points rather than will not be diving into some of the literature that's mentioned into it. I want to kind of give a quick overview of everything taught into it. At the end, I have this template I put together and I will post it to my social media and I'll walk through it and uh, uh, describe what's going on there and how I came up with that. And uh, as I go along, I'll try to burn up uh, some of my ideas on the missing text that burnt up in, I believe it was the Great Fire of Alexandria. I'll, I'll burn up some ideas I have on sort of reverse engineering that. And uh, I think that was about it. Yeah, let's let's get right into this. It'll probably take a little while, and it's a bit difficult to read in this mask. But uh, I'll just have to ask you. I'll just have to ask you to bear with me here. So, chapter one: imitation of the common principles of the art of poetry, epic poetry, tragedy, comedy, dithyrambic which is a regular short poem, are all modes of imitation. They differ in the medium, the objects, and the mode of imitation. Dithyrambic and gnomic poetry employ rhythm, tune, and meter in coordination, whereas tragedy and comedy employ rhythm, tune, and meter one at a time. Chapter 2 the objects of imitation. The object of imitation is men in action. Men can be depicted as better, worse, or as they are. Comedy aims to represent men as worse than they are. Tragedy aims to represent men as better than they are. Chapter 3. The Manner of Imitation. Narration should have its own persona. The narrator represents, pre presents characters living and moving before us. Three differences to distinguish artistic imitation are the medium, the object, and the manner. Drama are poems of higher character, who are acting and doing higher characters who are acting and doing something. Chapter 4. The Origin and Development of Poetry Poetry comes from two causes, the instinct for lesson learning and the instinct for harmony. When imitate in pain, contemplate and reproduce with minute fidelity. Pleasure is not to the imitation, but to the execution, the coloring, or some other cause. Poetry divergence. One, imitates noble actions and actions of good men. Two, imitates meaner actions or persons. Satire imitates noble actions or... Satire imitates noble actions or men. Comedy dramatizes the ludicrous. Tragedy should advance slowly while elements are developed. The definition of the ludicrous, chapter five, the definition of the ludicrous and a brief sketch of the rise of comedy. Comedy is the imitation of characters of lower type, not bad, the ludicrous being merely a subdivision of the ugly, not the painful or destructive. Example, a comic mask is ugly and distorted, but does not imply, plain, imply pain. Comedy originally had no history because no one took it seriously. That sounds like a joke to me. A pun, I think. The plot comes from Sicily. The Athenians abandoned the ambiac and the lampooning form. Epic poetry and tragedy imitate higher type characters. They differ in that epic poetry uses one kind of meter and is narrative in form with no limit, whereas tragedy only uses one cycle. Chapter 6, The Definition.
definition of tragedy. Tragedy is the imitation of action of an action that is serious, complete, and of a certain magnitude. The language the language embellished with artistic ornament through action, not narrative. Action implies characters qual action implies that characters qualify reasons to act. The character's nature and their thoughts determine success or failure. Plot is the imitation of action, the arrangements of incidents. Character is the virtue of which we ascribe certain qualities to the agents. Thought is required when a statement is proved or it may be a general truth enunciated. Every tragedy must have one, plot, two, character, three, diction, four, thought, five, spectacle, six, song. Plot and character are mediums of imitation. Diction is a manner of imitation. Thought, spectacle, and song are objects of imitation. Structure of the incidents is the most important in tragedy. Tragedy imitates life and action, and life consists in action, and its end is a mode of action, not a quality. Character determines men's qualities, but it is by their actions that they are happy or the reverse. Dramatic action is not with a view to the representation of character. Character comes in as a subsidiary to the actions. Hence, the incidents and the plot are the end of a tragedy, and the end of a tragedy is the chief thing of all. Without action, there cannot be a tragedy, but a tragedy can be without character. Can't really lick my fingers to change the page through this. <laughs> That's silly. Expressive character and a finished point of diction and thought is less important than the plot and artistically constructed incidents. Most powerful elements of the emotional are reversal of the situation and recognition scenes. You know, I'm going to back up there and that part, express, expressive character and finished point of diction and thought are less important than plot and artistically constructed incidents. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that might be something reversed in comedy. And uh, one of the reasons I think that is that or later on when it brings up the De Ex Machina, it doesn't describe what it is. It just says don't use it. So to me that suggests that it gets described in the comedy section and that it's probably a key point to comedy. And if uh, the, the De Ex Machina and Spectacles are more used, then the, the incidences might not be so important, especially if you're going to bring in, um, like, the De Ex Machina, you, you bring in unexplainable things to get your character out of a, a shitty situation, right? So maybe in comedy because it's comedy, maybe the finished point of diction and thought is more important than the artistically constructed incidences. I could be wrong, like I said before, I'm new to literature. I'm from the nonfiction world, so if you have any thoughts on that, if you like with it or disagree, please comment below. I'm all about learning and I'm not afraid of being call out for the fool that I may be. So to continue, the most, the most powerful elements of the emotional are reversal of the situation and recognition scenes. Plot is the first principle of the soul of tragedy, character the second. Yes, yeah, see in comedy it could be character is the most important thing and the plot is, is just how we experience them. I, I could be wrong, you know, but they say it's the, the least, uh, the least of higher order of the different types of uh, poetry. So maybe stuff like that might pass in comedy. 
thought is saying what is possible, and it fits in with the circumstance. Character is that which reveals moral purpose by showing what one chooses or one, what one avoids. Speeches, speeches are not thought or expressive of character. Thought is found where something is proved to be or not to be, or a general maxim is enunciated. Diction is the expression of a, the meaning in words, and its essence is the same in both verse and in prose. Song holds chief place among all the embellishments. Spectacle has emotional attraction of its own, but it is the least artistic and least connected with the arts of poetry, as the spectacle depends more on set design than the poet. Chapter 7. The plot must be a whole. Proper plot structure is the most important thing in tragedy. Tragedy is an imitation of an action that is complete and whole and of a certain magnitude. The whole has a beginning, middle, and an end. Beauty depends on magnitude and order in the plot. The length must be easily embraced by memory. The limit is fixed by the nature of the drama itself. Bigger or longer is more beautiful, provided that the whole be easily understood. Chapter 8 I don't know if these are chapters or stanzas or something, but I'm going to go with uh, chapters because it just seems more natural to me that way. Chapter 8. The plot must be a unity. Unity of plot does not consist in unity of the hero. Infinite various incidences in a man's life cannot be reduced to unity, nor the many actions of one man cannot be made into one action. It is an error to make a story center around one man and all the incidents that made him a hero. The incidents imitated without necessary or probable connection. It, the correction is to make the story center around one action. The object imitated, the object imitated is one, so the plot must imitate one action and that a whole. The structural union of the parts being such that if any one of them is displaced or removed, the whole will be disjointed and disturbed, for a thing whose presence or absence makes no visible dis difference is not an organic part of the whole. Chapter 9. Plot Continued. Dramatic Unity. It is not the function of the poet... Er, it is not the function of the poet to relate what has happened, but what may happen, what is possible according to probability or necessity. Poetry expresses the universal, history expresses the particular. In comedy, the poet first constructs the plot and then adds characteristic names. Lampooners write about individuals, There's probably some clue in there. You know, that first constructs the plot and then adds the characteristic names. That kind of goes against what I said earlier. It makes it sound like plot's a bit more important. And Lampooners write about individuals. So if we know tragedy is about an action, this says that characters, well, Lampooners, which is a type of comedy, is about individuals. So we can assume that in some of the myths and text that uh, it's going to probably be more about developing character than it is about plot. Oh, I think I lost myself here. Okay, there we go. Tragedians tend to use real names. What is possible is credible. A poet makes plots, not verses, and may stumble up on a historical subject as it conforms to probability. Episodic plots and actions are the worst, as episodes or acts succeed one another without probable or necessary sequence. Events should occur naturally, by themselves or by accident. 
coincidences should have an air of design. Chapter 10. Plot Continued. Definitions of Simple and Complex Plots. Simple Plots. Pardon me. Plots are simple or complex. Simple Plots are the, where, is where the action is one and continuous. The change of fortune takes place without reversal of the situation and without recognition. Complex plots is where the action is one where the change is accompanied by a reversal of the situation or a recognition or both. These changes should arise from the plot structure so what follows is probable or necessary. It makes all the difference whether any given event is before or after the change. Chapter 11. Plot Continued. Reversal of the Situation, Recognition, and Tragic or Disastrous Incidents Defined and Explained. <coughs> the reversal of the situation is a change by which the action veers around to its opposite. Recognition is a change from ignorance to knowledgeable, producing a love-hate situation between the persons for good or bad fortune. The best form of recognition is a coincidence with a reversal of the situation. Inanimate objects can be objects of recognition. One can also recognize if or discover if a person has done a thing or not. Recognition of a person is connected to plot and action. This recognition and a reversal of the situation inspire pity or fear. These situations determine good or bad fortune. Chapter 12, the quantitative parts of tragedy defined. Quantitative and separate parts of tragedy include the prologue, the episode, the exode, the choric song, which is subdivided into parode and stasima. All are common to plays. The prologue is the entire part which, which precedes the parode of the, cho the chorus. The episode is the part which is between complete choric songs. The exode entire is the entire part which has no choric song after it. The choric is the parod subdivided part is the undivided utterance of the chorus. The stasimon is a choric ode without anapastes or tetrameters. tetrameters. Comos and joint imitation of chorus and action actors. So that's one part that I never heard before. I always heard of introduction, rise in action, climax, fall in action, conclusion. And this is obviously, you know, way outdated, but I still do work it into my template because it could have, you know, it thinking about it like that can help with storytelling just because it's not on those things you know a, the chorus doesn't have to be a chorus it can just be a tool you use to keep consistency going or to s stress a point kind of thing so I do include it in the template but I also include the rising and fall in action which it isn't in, in Aristotle's poetics but it's because that's what I learned about storytelling and I wanted the template to, to, to jive with what, uh, how, how I've learned to work already. So chapter 13, plot continued. What constitutes tragic action? Aim for not a simple, but a complex plan. Imitate actions which excite pity and fear, which is distinctive of tragedy. The change of fortune is not a virtuous man from adver adversi adversity to prosperity, nor the utter downfall of a villain. It is someone not eminently good and just, whose misfortune is brought about not out, brought about not by vice or depravity, but by some error or frailty. It must be somebody 
renowned and prosperous. That's something I kind of think the, the comedy part might have included is that maybe you don't have to be renowned or well known because it's about characters of a lesser order the comedy right so why would you go with somebody renowned or with a sense of prestige for that it, I get the impression well what I as, assume I guess in the missing text would have been comedy is about the low somebody of lower character who um is not well known, but rises by some X machina, rises from adversity to prosperity, I guess. And we'll probably cover a bit more of my thoughts on it, but that's just one thing I'm thinking is that comedy is kind of the opposite of tragedy. So on some level, if we have everything on tragedy here, kind of have a lot about comedy as well. Pity is inspired by unmerited misfortune. Fear is when the misfortune is of somebody the audience relates to. A well-constructed plot is single in its issue. The change of fortune is good to bad, and a better character is imitated instead of a worse character. It is an error to assume that an unhappy ending means a great tragedy. A great tragedy must have the right ending. In comedy, there is two tragic plots with an opposite catastrophe for the good and the bad. Those involved are the deadliest of enemies and become close friends, and no one is slain or slays. And I think nowadays we go one step further and say somebody gets hitched, somebody gets married. Right? That's usually it. It's usually what happens and it's usually kind of the point of comedy is uh, of one type of comedy right chapter 14 plot continued the tragic emotions of pity and fear should spring out of the plot itself the superior pro the superior poet arouses fear and pity not by spectacular means but from the result of the inner structure of the plot. Fear and pity come through imitation, and it is evidently impressed upon the incidents. Circumstances are terrible or pitiful when the hero and the villain have a relationship, like being friends or enemies or indifferent. With the best of these, when it is a really close relationship, like a son against a father. The action done must be conscious or in ignorance and the kinship discovered later to be about to act with knowledge of the person and then to not act is not good the best is when a person is about to do an irreparable deed in ignorance make the discovery before it is done and then to not act chapter 15 the element of character in tragedy in respects of character, aim for four things. One, good character. Any speech or action that manifests moral, moral purpose will be expressive of character. A character is good if the purpose is good. Number two, propriety or valor. Number three, true to life, distinct from good or propriety. Number four, consistency. Even inconsistent characters must be consistently inconsistent. The plot and structure, the plot structure and character portrait must be necessary or probable. The way the character speaks or acts and the sequence of events must follow this rule of necessity or probability. It is therefore evidence that the unraveling of the plot, no less than the complication, must arise from the plot itself. It must not be brought about by the de ex machina. Now, like I said, it's not written in the part of the treaties, and that's why I think it might be a bigger role in, cam in comedy in the missing text, is because at 
some point you kind of got to explain it, right? If you're writing about it. So I did get the definition and it's from Wikipedia. I'm going to include that right here right now. A plot de, de, de ex machina is a plot device whereby a seemingly unsolvable problem in a story is suddenly and abruptly resolved by an unexpected and unlikely occurrence. Its function is generally to resolve an, un, uh, an otherwise ir irresolvable plot situation, to bring the tale to a happy ending, or act as a comedic device. So you see, if Wikipedia is saying it's like a, an actual comedic device and it's not really in here, maybe people read some of that burnt text and wrote about it and somewhere out there we got somebody's memory of the missing text or, and there's probably rules out there that are put together just like this for tragedy kind of thing. I bet you now that I think about it that somebody probably did read it, find out about the fire, instantly started writing it down probably still it's probably still out there somewhere we just don't know exactly where within action there must be nothing irrational if the irrational cannot be excluded it should be outside the scope of the tragedy tragedy is an imitation of purse of a purse these are not tongue twisters this thing doesn't let me open my jaw all the way, so that has a little bit of a, that's a little bit of an obstacle. Tragedy is an imitation of persons who are above the common level. The likeness is true to life, yet more beautiful, just like a painting. So, when representing men who are irascible or indent, uh, easily irritable, and lazy or have other defects of character that should be preserved and ennobled. Know the rules and do not neglect appeals to the senses. And if you think about it, that's what poetry is most known for is the appeal to the senses, right? Like it's it's not like nonfiction where you just describe what you see. Poetry, you describe what is seen, but you probably focus more on the impact, right? So chapter 16, plot continued. Recognition, it's various kinds with examples. The kinds of recognition, number one, signs. These are the least artistic. They are like scars and relics, tokens and jewelry. Two, wanton in the art, discovery by plot. Three, the memory is awakened by an object. Number four, the process of reasoning. A composite kind of recognition is where a false inference on the part of one of the characters occurs. The best recognitions arise from the incidents themselves, whereas the where the startling discovery is made by natural means, dispense with artificial aids like amulets, the process of the reasoning is the next best. Chapter 17 Practical Rules Practical Rules for the Tragic Poet As a rule, look at each scene with the utmost vividness as a spectator of the action from a distance to discover what is consistent and what is inconsistent as oversight offends audiences. Use appropriate gestures and imagery for the emotions. Poetry implies Poetry implies either a happy gift of nature or a strain of madness. In one case, a man can take the mold of any character. In the other, he is lifted out of his proper self. Start with a general outline and fill in the episodes and amplify in detail. Episodes must be relevant to the action. In drama, you 
with short episodes in epic poetry use longer. Chapter 18. is the mode 
modes of utterance, such as commands, prayers, statements, threats, questions, and so on. Mastery of diction belongs to another art, not poetry. And that kind of screwed me over a bit, you know, I took up this to become a better storyteller and writer and then on how to do dialogue it's not included. You know, that's that's a little that's a little important, I think. Dialogue or diction. But the, again, this isn't storytelling in particular, it's poetry. We just use it to rank our best to worst um, stories nowadays, with the best being those that follow these rules. Chapter 20. Diction or language in general. Now I feel like I missed another one. Chapter 20, Diction or Language in General. Language includes letters, syllables, connecting words, nouns, verbs, inflections, or cases, and sentence or phrases. A letter is an indivisible sound, not every such sound, but only which can form a part of a group of sounds. All these descriptions are not what I learned. <coughs> So I don't really include it in my template or anything. I'm only covering it because it's a summary review, but they're definitely not what I learned. I don't know if it's outdated. I don't know if it still applies or it's just another way of describing what I learned, but I'll go through with what it said. So a vowel is an inaudible impact by the tongue or lip. A semi-vowel is an impact audible whereas a mute semi-vowel is impact inaudible. A syllable is a non-significant sound composed of a mute and a vowel. A connecting word is a non-significant sound neither causes nor hinders the unions of sounds into one significant sound. It can be placed in the beginning, middle, or end of a phrase. Or phrase. 
phrase is a composite significant sound, some at least whose parts are in themselves significant, for not every such group of words consists of verbs and nouns. A sentence or phrase may form a unity in two ways, a signifying one thing or several parts linked together. Chapter 21, Poetic Diction. Simple words are composed of non-significant elements. Double or compound words are composed of non-significant elements or both significant. Every word is either a current, strange, metaphorical, newly coined, lengthened, contracted, altered, or ornamental word. A current or proper word is one that is in general use. A strange word is generally a foreign word. A metaphor is a, an alien name by which transference genius to species and their different iterations of the two. A metaphor is an alien name by transference from genius to species or the different iterations of the two. Okay, I get that. It doesn't describe what an ornamental word is. Um, maybe if that's because ornamental is kind of self-explanatory. Or maybe it's in the missing text. Maybe ornamental words are a, were a big part of comedy. I don't know. But for some reason, the treatise I read, it just had question mark in brackets. It didn't describe what an ornamental word is. I wonder if maybe that's a curse word. Huh. You know, like, s slang almost, like, um... Words like fuck shit motherfucker, that kind of thing. A newly coined word is something never in use but is adopted by the poet. A lengthened word is when a vowel is exchanged or a syllable inserted. A contracted word is when part of the word is removed. An altered word is one is one. An altered part is when one part is changed and the other part or the other part recast. Nouns can be masculine, feminine, or neuter. No noun ends in a mute or vowel short. You know, this was all like written in Greek or something, so when I think about it, other languages have masculine and feminine words. I remember learning in French a bit. So maybe those definitions of vowels and nouns are just in, in that frame kind of thing. Chapter 22, Poetic Diction Continued, How Poetry Combines Elevation of Language with pers Perscuity. Perfection of style is being clear without being mean and uses only current or proper words. Diction is lofty and above the commonplace. It uses unusual words like metaphorical or lengthened words. A riddle consists of a metaphor. Jargon uses strange words. Uses strange words. So that's, that's kind of one of the... That can be pretty useful for dialogue when you're writing. To be clear requires you to avoid lengthening or contracting or al using altered words. Use moderation, of course. Use metaphors and strange words to express the ludicrous. If you replace these words with the proper word, the observation should be obvious. Phrases not part of the current idiom will, will give distinction to your style. <clears throat> Good metaphors implies an eye for resemblances. Use compound words in dithyrams. Use rare words in heroic poetry. Use metaphors in I'm by it. Use current or proper metaphorical and ornamental words in ambiac verses. Chapter 23. Poetic. I don't have a title for that. One. That is. That's embarrassing. I don't know what the title for that one is. Sorry about that. Chapter twenty-three. Poetic imitation.
single action, but a single period. Epic poetry is about one or many persons. Epic poetry has little connecting events. Okay, I got a little note here. Um, note that tragedy discards anything that doesn't serve the plot. Something not connected to an event won't make it into a tragedy. And that might be one of the reasons it was earlier said that not all elements of a tragedy is in an epic poem. Okay, actually, I think that might come up later. Hmm. It's funny because I can confuse myself in my notes and then just keep working past it, meaning to come back. And then I get to the video and I'm like, uh, and it looks like I got a couple links of a place here. They're falling out or something. That's annoying. Chapter 24, Epic Poetry Continued, Further Points of Agreement with Tragedy. Epic poetry is simple or complex, ethical or pathetic. It can have a reversal of situation, recognitions, scenes of suffering. It will have artistic thoughts and diction, a single view scalability with a capacity to enlarge. It can have multiple plots or actions. Epic poetry can be episodic. It uses heroic meter, has little narration, and uses more irrationality or wonder. And a probable impossibility is better to use in it than an improbable possibility. Yeah, that's a little tricky. Like, uh, a probable impossibility is better than an improbable possibility. Okay, so an improbable possibility is probably winning the lottery. It's unlikely to happen, but it's possible. Right? So unless that's a part of your story, you shouldn't include it. So what would be a probable impossibility? Ghosts, maybe? It's possible ghosts could exist, but it's also impossible given the body is dead, that there should be anything for you to interact with, right? So maybe a ghost is preferred over a lot of win. Hmm. Diction should be elaborated in the pauses of the action, where there is no expressive of char expression of character or thought. Chapter 25, Critical Objections Brought Against Poetry and the Principles on Which They Are to Be Answered. Imitate one of three things, things as they are or were, things as they are said or thought to be, or things as they ought to be. There are two kinds of faults in poetry. One is where you touch the essence, and that is an incorrect imitation through capacity. The other is an accidental. It is from an improper choice of imitation, a technical inaccuracy. It's an error to describe the impossible unless it renders the ending more striking. Examine who says or does what to whom when they do it, by what means, and for what end. Resolve difficulties with usage of language. Sometimes an expression is metaphorical. When a word seems to inv invade... When a word seems to invade some inconsistency of meaning, consider how many senses it may bear in the particular passage. The impossible must be justified by a reference to the artistic requirements, or to a higher reality, or to a received opinion, appeal to commonly said appeal to what is commonly said to be, it does not violate reason. A probable impossible a pro
probable impossibility is preferable to an improbable possibility. Like I said before, a lot of this treaties repeats and that's why I break it down into a single page template because like we're almost at an hour here and we're on we're coming up on the last chapter, but trying to take all that and, and use it as a reference when you're writing, that's a bit much. So we're, 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 we're about to get into the template there. <clears throat> Just got to finish this up. Irrationality, irrationality and depravity of character should be censored if there is no inner necessity for introducing them. I wonder if that's opposite in comedy, if that you should uh, kind of embellish or emphasize irrationality and depravity. Critical, ob critical objection sources are, it's impossible, it's irrational, it's morally hurtful, it's contradictory, or it's contrary to artistic correctness. So that might be something where, let's say you're writing about wizards, and one spell for one guy does a fireball, and then if you get somebody else to do it, it does a water ball, that would be contrary to artistic correctness, I think. Final chapter, chapter 26. A general estimate of the comparative worth of epic poetry and tragedy. Which is higher quality, epic poetry or tragedy? It is assumed that the more refined is of higher quality. To imitate everything is unrefined. Epic poetry requires the audience to know things. So it is in this respect that epic poetry is considered higher than tragedy. With respect to inspire emotion though, the, through the events themselves, not necessarily being ruined, not necessarily, okay. At, with respect to inspire emotion through the events themselves, not necessarily being ruinable by bad actors makes tragedy the higher quality of the two in respect to events. Epic poetry tends to cover historic periods and have events occur without necessary connection in tragedy, all events lead to the next lead to the next according to probability. When it comes down to it, tragedy is in more respects of higher quality than epic poetry. Now, I think I wanted to add something. Is that um, comedy? If that text is missing and then nobody wrote about what was missing, we don't have a blueprint for it then, which means comedy could potentially become the higher order right just because something's maybe requires a more refined audience or one inspires emotion better both of them have we have the blueprints for but the one that's considered the lower we don't so maybe if you can like maybe there's an argument to be made that that rule is outdated it's harder to write comedy because we don't have a proper framework. That's a maybe, All right? I, okay, so let's see some of uh, his thoughts here. I wonder if in comedy, some of that was worse, where reverse, you know, where the probable impossibility is pre preferable to the improbable possibility. What if that's reversed in comedy? What if you prefer the impro winning the lottery to finding ghosts kind of thing? And I was, I think it's safe to assume that comedy requires happy endings. That's probably where the De Ex Machina would have been described and whatnot, saying that maybe it's a, <clears throat> maybe it's a part of, a, part of the very structure of comedy is to include that and it's to ensure a happy ending. Maybe, right? And maybe the complication and unraveling in tragedy is actually, you know, kind of like a scene of destruction and rebuild or something for comedy 
There's probably something they got there for that. There's punchlines, irony. You know, at one point he mentions what inspires fear and pity. I betcha he would have mentioned what inspires laughter. I once learned that laughter comes from, <clears throat> it's a form of communication to communicate something that looks potentially menacing, but is not. And the main reason we laugh is to communicate that to others. So that's something I, I learned, and I'm betting that in the missing text, he probably has better definitions of what comedy is, but something like that could have made its way in. And some of the things that aren't necessarily in tragedy might be fundamental to comedy, is what I was thinking. Like, maybe in comedy, you're supposed to go from, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> Maybe in comedy, you're supposed to go from adversity to prosperity. There's maybe supposed to be the downfall of a villain. It, maybe it's supposed to not be about somebody renowned. Maybe you're supposed to use the De X machina. You probably use the multiple part plots. At one point, it mentions there's the dual plots in comedy with opposite catastrophes for each, the good and the bad. Um, so, like, the multiple plots could be the love, uh, like, lo the pathetic, the love, the passion, the motivation, some sort of struggle for personal development, um, some sort of resolution, maybe your reputation might come into involved. I bet, and yeah, it would, uh, it, it would most likely describe types of comedy. And maybe the misfortune would be brought about by depra depravity or vice, you know? It seems, I, I think it was brought up and it seemed like comedy focuses on character. So you might actually emphasize the vice or depravity. Anyway, I think that was about it on my thoughts on what might have been missing. It'd be nice to get some feedback on that. If you have thoughts, put them in. Okay, so this template to help us t with our storytelling. Alright, so I'll post it onto uh, my my other social media, Twitter, Instagram. I'm not really rolling with Facebook because they don't even let me use Warlock Grimsmith. They want Grim Grimsmith, so I'm kind of uh, trying to learn these social medias. <laughs> I might stick with the ones I use. So it'll definitely be on my Twitter, though, okay? And it's just a single page, and it's just a reference thing that you would have on the side when you're writing your story. And uh, it's, it's some of the key points, right? And it's kind of designed by me for me, so you might have had some key points you would have wanted to put in. But I, I try to make it best for everyone. So at the top... You are going to have to decide to imitate one of three things. Things as they are, things as they are said or thought to be, or things as they ought to be. Then you're going to want to decide what type of tragedy you're writing. The complex, which is one plot or in the, with a reversal of situation and recognition. The pathetic, which is motivated by love or passion. The ethical, which is motivated by ethics or morality. The simple, which is one plot with no reversal or no recognition. Okay, and then now I have the rise in action and fall in action kind of traditional template. And I superimpose some sections, of some things over this. So... To start, we got the prologue chorus, episode chorus, episode epi chorus, episode exode. So the prologue is still the introduction, the exode is still the conclusion, but the chorus, I have it written down as a consistency tool. So when you're writing your story, you want to keep your, you want to keep things consistent, being reminded that there's a chorus and an episode to guide you through your story can remind you to be consistent. Make sure you include the scenes that line up with the other ones um, and surround your either at the beginning or at the end of your, your scene, your episode. And then I have the complication and the unraveling split 
the it splits uh, the it splits. I have it split on the way up, right? Like obviously your complication and unraveling can separate right at the peak. But uh, I didn't do that. I thought that the peak can still occur in the unraveling. You know, maybe that's wrong. Maybe it should, the unraveling should only be on the downfall. But I wanted at the peak, I put the reversal of the, the situation and recognition. Uh, he, he said that that was one of the most important things in, in doing the emotion for the tragedy. So I put that as the climax in that template. Um, and then the scene of suffering. I wasn't sure where to put that. Would you put that in the rise in action or the fall in action? And I personally think the scene of suffering would probably belong in the beginning. But I think it can also work in an ending. Scene of suffering, but it might not always be the best. He said for tragedy, you want the right ending, you don't just want a bad ending, a bad event to occur. And then, spectacles I wasn't exactly like it. He says it's the least artistic, but nowadays, we don't nowadays we don't speak in poetry or have as much song and dance, so maybe and we do movies, so spectacles are pretty important, but I uh. I figured you could put it on the anywhere really on the rise in action at the climax or on the downfall it's probably most appropriate at the climax being used with the reversal of the situation and the recognition that's what I thought and um, then all of that all of the has to be a complete single action with probable sequences, right? So the audience shouldn't have to fill in any blanks of why something is happening on the screen. It should all make perfect sense, right? It must have the right ending, not necessarily a terrible ending. And you should aim to satisfy the moral sense. If you're gonna to try to make something <clears throat> great, you might as well you know, go with uh, what he says is the best, the most popular. Now, <clears throat> you're going to want to step back and examine your work. This will, this reminds you of that to see who says or does what to whom, by what means, and for what end and when. So that'll that'll help you after you got something going on, or maybe you're stuck and you're trying to figure out what occurs naturally. Step back, take a look at that. Remember, you're going to want to advance slowly and develop your elements. You want to inspire emotion, do not dictate it, and appeal to the senses. It is best to have your characters act not knowing and then not act after the discovery of whatever your situation is. Remember that a finished point of diction and complete thought is less desirable than the plot or artistically designed incidences. And remember, a probable impossibility is better than an improbable possibility. Did I? No, that's right. Okay. Coincidences should have an air of design. Remember that pity is unmerited misfortune, and fear is unmerited misfortune against somebody the audience relates to. You want to avoid using the de ex machina unless it is outside of the action and it's somewhere in the narration. Uh, you want to avoid incorrect end or improper imitation. So make sure you, you use the right thing and don't misrepresent it. Uh, try to avoid the impossible, the irrational, the morally hurtful, the contradictory, or the inconsistent. And then some, th some thoughts on your character. <clears throat> your character should be renowned should be depicted as, depicted as better 
should be true to life, use real names, be consistent, even in inconsistency, preserve and ennoble um, undesirable traits, you know, make sure they're there, maybe make them a little more, a little more acceptable to kind of thing, to that character, that situation, understandable maybe. <clears throat> It's best when the hero and the villain have a relationship, not when they're enemies and not when they're indifferent. The narrator should have its own persona, its own characteristics. And remember, character are rep is what character is represented by men's qualities. It reveals their moral purpose. Men's actions decide whether they're happy or not. And it's, yeah, it's a pretty basic, like, basic template. It just tells you a few things to remember, to avoid, and some thoughts on where you can put things as you're going along in your story. So uh, yeah, that that's it. Oh, about storytelling, I might as well go just a little step further here. Use it in your personal life. You know, if you can either be a hero or you can be a villain, you can be a victim, or you can be a guide. <clears throat> and uh, if you're if you're the victim, you're, you're going to lose. You always lose. Everything sucks, right? If if you're the villain, well, if you're the victim, you need a hero then, right? You need somebody to come save your ass. If you're the villain, even though everything, just like the victim everything sucks and is happening to you, you you don't take, internalize that and grow from it, learn and better yourself and help yourself cope, rather you lash out at the world and villains wind up dead or in jail. Um, the guide, you obviously want to be a hero to your, or the hero, you obviously want to be a hero to your own life. When shit is bad happening to the hero, they don't give up like the victim. They don't lash out like the villain. They internalize it and they grow. It becomes their scene of suffering, right? So it's a necessary part to winning at the end, beating the villain, getting the girl, whatever it is. Try to keep that hero mindset. Now, the guide, the guide is the person who shows the hero how to be a hero. The guide was a hero. That's something that they say you want to do when you're making sales. If you try to come in and be a hero, well, everybody's their own hero in their own life. You're just two heroes, right? So if you wanna sell something or influence somebody, come in as the guide to somebody else as their hero, right? You're gonna to wanna to offer them what they need to succeed. And it's all about how you frame it. So if it's sales, right, you, you want you don't want to be like, oh, look what I found. This is the greatest thing ever. Yeah, da, da, da. You want to be like, hey, I couldn't help but notice you are you have this disadvantage. You're missing out on this thing. Over here, this is how you solve it, right? So that's just some thoughts. There is a guy out there that talks about it really well. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but just search how to apply storytelling to your life. And he, he can break it down to you for you. That was the gist of it. And if you mix that in with what we learned about error 